Welcome back to This Week, I'm Somna Sambu. The Zamfara State Governor, Belo Matawale, has given assurances that he won't defect to the All Progressives Congress. But his predecessor, Abdulaziz Yari, has further warned that if the incumbent governor defects, he would lose his seat going by the Supreme Court verdict that brought him to office in 2019. The former governor said nobody had informed them, either in writing or verbally, that Matawali was planning defection to the APC. He warned that the Supreme Court nullified the election of the All Progressives Congress candidates in 2019 and declared the PDP candidates as winners. According to Yari, Matawali was being misled by some people to join the APC, forgetting the circumstances that made him the governor of the state. All right, for an in-depth analysis on this story, I'm now being joined by Dakbo Titoju, who is a legal practitioner to help us unbundle all these issues. Uh, <laughs> thanks for joining us. Thank you Politicians much. like overheating the polity. <laughs> but I just want you to bring out the legal aspects of this uh, warning, for example, that the former governor has given to the incumbent governor. Yes, indeed, all the candidates of the APC were not allowed by the Supreme Court um, in, in, in that election, and yes. he was a beneficiary of this um, Supreme judgment. Court judgment, which yes. now brought in place his government. Yes. And so, if uh, the feelings were having that he will defect to the APC yes. go, becomes true, yes. then this former governor is warning of all that may happen, that he would have to vacate his seat. Yes. How true is that no. in the face of the law? Well, um, the former governor is right uh, to say that uh, Matawali should remain in PDP and, and should not uh, in any way decamp. Why? Because the decision of the Supreme Court, while the decision was handed down, there was clear order as to the candidate of the party. That is, that is the language. It's written in black and white. The candidate of the party, which is the second runner, should be the one to, I mean, uh, who have the same geographical spread, should be the one, you understand, to take the position of, uh, the, the, the position APC won in Zafar State. So if Matawali is willing to come to any of this political party, what he needed to do is to drop that mandate. Mandate, <laughs> the uh, votes given to them by the Supreme Court. And then for the deputy governor. But if the deputy governor too will leave, it means you are calling for a by-election because the speaker will have to hold for before the by-election. So yeah. it is a warning, and that warning is for himself to advise himself whether legally he has a right to decamp. You see, people say, yes, other governors have been decamping. Uh, yes. Yeah, we have example Ebo, of a I mean, state. Ebony state. <laughs> it has not been tested. Yes, and the situation of Ebony is clearly different from this. Ebony state won an election under that political party. And then he was declared winner. If he decamps right now and he's been challenged, the consequence is for the court to decide. However, Matawali's case, he did not win at the poll. He won through the decision of the Supreme Court. And in interpreting that decision, what it means is that Section 180 will allows you as a tenure of governor to be four years. For the period of four years, Section 180 of the Nigerian Constitution Amendment requires that Matawali will be the governor, which is a PDP candidate, will be the governor in Zafar State for four years. Now, a lot of Nigerians will be confused when it comes to the issues of governors defecting. Yes. And there doesn't, uh, there's no problem as such, mm. unlike the peculiar situation of Matawali. Yes. But when it comes to senators and House of Representative members, yes. you see a lot of people saying that their seats should be declared. What's the difference between these two positions? You see, there's no provision in our constitution that when the governor they come, he should lose his seat. No. Only the it lawmakers. It is only the lawmakers. And I think by parity of reasoning, in law, you have to reason logically. Parity of reasoning. Political party are the ones who are, I mean, who who go through election. They said the vehicle. I mean, the, the vehicle for an election 
is the political party. The candidate is just a driver of it. And in any case, if you look at section 177C, it gives you the right that you must be sponsored a party. Then section 31 says primary election is important. It has that primary election that gives a candidate, that, that when the candidate emerges from primaries, that he will now run as a candidate in that party. There is no independent candidacy in Nigeria, in our constitution. And therefore, that is why it is the party that owns the votes. So in any case, any candidate who decides to decamp, apart from the provision that says that for the National Assembly that, oh, there must be, uh, um, uh, maybe there's a fraction or maybe there's dispute that arises. Yeah, then I think there's a faction, faction in, the, uh, in the political party. Yes, yes. Then you can decide to move to the camp. You know, that is well understood. And that is what the Constitution says. Reason, the only reason. But for you to now get benefit from a vote, you have enjoyed the position by virtue of the uh, uh, party, and now you want to now the camp. You have to leave that vote for that party. Okay. Now, let's talk about uh, this uh, whole issue because uh, Zamfara State has been in the news for uh, uh, some kind of politics that we don't understand for a very long period of time. And we've also seen the APC approaching the Supreme Court to review its judgment on this same issue. Yes. Uh, the Supreme Court dismissed all of that. Yes, that yes. It's, it's judgment you see, that is why we, are mo we must be careful. That is why Matawali must be very careful. Because, like I said, the other time, when I had opportunity, I said to people, the decision in Zafar jettison over 2,000 uh, decision of jurisdiction. Because that uh, judgment was a pre-election matter that struck out an election matter. Hmm. Because election had already been concluded in Zafar. Now, this matter that gave Matawale that position today that is, I mean, uh, that is heading I mean, uh, Zafar as the governor, was a pre-election matter. An issue of jurisdiction is that a court cannot assume jurisdiction on matters that is not before it. Now, the Supreme Court, in their wisdom, in order to create sanity in Zafar State, struck out, I mean, that election that brought about the APC in a pre-election matter, that is a peculiar matter. Just the same way it happened in River State. Exactly. <laughs> now, this decision must be carefully implemented. Because if we go back to the Supreme Court, that the person who has benefited is now trying to, 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 I mean, to, to undermine to the other party, the, other party. <laughs> the, the court might be very angry to slam him and damnify him in damages. Now, let's talk about these um, pre-election matters and so on. Why do you think that political parties uh, don't settle themselves very well and then they will allow issues to, you know, get to this kind of extent yes. and then uh, conclusion and then you will now go to, to, courts. to, 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 to courts and yes. all of that. You must have heard former President Goodluck Jonathan saying that the courts mm. should not be the one giving the... Uh, uh, directive. Uh, uh, you know, gi no, not directive, but giving the people their leaders. Yes. That the election, irrespective of what happens, that the courts henceforth should, no matter what the case is, ask the people to go back, uh, uh, I mean, the, the candidates to go back to the election and test their votes and not just declare a winner. Yes. What do you say to that? Yeah, very okay. Uh, you see, generally... I am also an advocate of the fact that the leadership must come from the people, meaning that the I mean, uh, election of leaders should come from the people. But there are certain circumstances that when the court weigh and look at the situation as it were, it will cost the country more economic war. Like, for instance, the case of uh, uh, Amici that time, Election has already been concluded. The people had already voted. And it appears that it is party that people vote for. And that is why I still I think, I think it is still the best. Since you have voted for the party, the two candidates that came out for a particular party, these are the people. And this is the person who ordinarily 
emerged as winner of the primaries. Therefore, let that candidate be there. Because if the Supreme Court have ordered a return to the pool, when election have been concluded, because of one political party's uh, uh, internal, in, challenges. internal challenges, <laughs> it will cost the nation a lot of costs. And then it will slow down the pace of governance. Look at some of our states now. We have irregularity of uh, election time. In Kogi State, for instance, it's different from the general election time. In the Anambra State, it's, you know, it is because of the problem of the election matters. The election matter will linger for a while, and at the end of the day, when it gets to the Supreme Court, when the decisions are taken, maybe you have to go back to pool, then you go back for a new, a fresh election. And then when you emerge as a winner, you have to stick to your Section 180. Now, do, do, do you for for, <laughs> Very interesting. Uh, so it, 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 it overshoot the time. If, if the governor election. decides to challenge the status quo as it is, yes. and he decides to defect mm. to the APC, mm. do you foresee these people going back to the, the same Supreme Court yes. that has said that it had finalized a closure on this issue there to is, seek for reliefs? No, you see, there are reliefs that can be sought on the interpretation of the judgment of the Supreme Court. And you think the Supreme Court will accept this? No, you see, it is a different... Look, legal issues are issues that develops our jurisprudence. And this issue is one of those issues that may also help to put an end to this governor's deflecting and deflecting. And, and that's when why one of the Supreme Court judges actually referred to it as a vexatious matter. You know, this kind of matter should be taken with serious caution. Why? If the judgment of the Supreme Court is to be, some, I mean, undermined, it, where you take it to court, you take it for interpretation, and then you cite whoever is there for contempt. Because you cannot benefit from a judgment. And then be contemptuous. You go and circumvent the and judgment circumvent midway. Circumvent the way. Will it be seen as circumventing the judgment it midway? It means you are circumventing, and it means you are, you are going in contempt of that judgment. And that is a, a very serious... Uh, and what, what kind of penalty do you think that the Supreme it, Court justices will dish out to that is such said, a governor, said, governor who tries something like that? They could ask him to pay all the money he has acquired as a governor. All the salaries? All the salaries, all the monuments. Now, he, it, can be, he can be asked to pay. The Supreme Court can even say he should proceed to prison <laughs> for a period of time until he purges himself of the contempt of the court. Anything can be said. But the truth is this. Once you are benefiting from the decision of a court. You must be seen to satisfy it, not to benefit and it halfway. Till the end. Exactly. You cannot appropriate and reprobate at the same time. The law forbids that you appropriate here and then reprobate. You are talking from two sides of your mouth. You are a PDP here, and then they have given you four years. You want to change to them. It is not, it is not done. Like, it, it's as if you're a nomadic uh, politician, <laughs> moving that's from one do. political party to the well, other. That's all we've always had. <laughs> <laughs> but so, just that this, this, on this particular issue, it's just uh, the governor yes. who is affected. If it yes. were the lawmakers, I mean, you see them you changing see, political see, parties here and there. the lawmaker and changing political party to the other. Decisions are there, too, right now, that you cannot. Federal High Court have made decisions that you cannot defect. Or except there is what we call fraction in your political party. Mm. Uh, all right. We, we must go for a break. When we come back, we'll look at the political aspect of it because we've looked at the legal aspects now. Time for a short break. There's more when we return. Stay with us. Welcome back to This Week and Some Assemble. Well, we'll continue with this conversation that we've been having uh, on the <laughs> fears uh, by uh, <clears throat> APC leaders in Zamfara State that if the incumbent governor who had uh, benefited from the Supreme Court judgment moves to that party, which is the ruling party at the federal level, that he would have to vacate his seat. And as you have with me here, Dr. Titoju, who is a legal practitioner and is helping us to unbundle all of these issues uh, politically. Now, let's take a look at the politics of all of this. Yes. Um, <clears throat> the ruling party, mm. from what a lot of people have said in newspaper reports, is the one that seems to be courting the governor mm. uh, uh, of Zamfara State, Bello yes. Matawale. Yes. If the ruling party eventually succeeds, for example, 
just the way they are doing with other governors. We've heard that they are also doing the same with Cross River State Governor Ben Ayade and all of that. Mm -hmm. And you know, they have succeeded with uh, uh, the Eboin State Governor. Mm -hmm. Now, if they eventually do succeed mm. Mm. and get Belo Matawale into APC. Don't you think that there is a way they, they can manage these legal issues for the remaining two years and eventually the governor will go away with it? So what will PDP be looking at? The party is for PDP. I mean, the vote mm -hmm. is for PDP. He, PDP he, is the owner of the votes. PDP must stay and protect their votes. So if they try to rule you as a party, uh, as, as a leader of the party, or a PDP in Zafar. The PDP national will not be looking. But why has PDP not challenged the defection of David Umahi in Ebony State? Yes, it is up to them to challenge. Is it because of the peculiar nature of this particular APC issue in Zafar? Why we are talking legally for this, particularly Zafar? is because of the peculiar situation. APC won Zafara. The entire, no, I mean, uh, city in Zafara was won by APC. And the court said no, the, uh, including uh, the governor. The senatorial. The senatorial and, and everything. Uh, but the, the, the Supreme Court said no. APC did not uh, fulfill section 177C of the 1999 Constitution and section 31 of the Electoral Act. So they cannot be seen to have uh, been voted for in this election. Therefore, he sacked all. That is what the Supreme Court said. The apex court in the land. I will sack them. He said, the candidate of the party, which is PDP, should take over. Now, what we are trying to say is this. That party, which is PDP, must protect their votes. They have to, they so, cannot sleep and allow <laughs> their candidate to move. So is this also a warning for governors like uh, Ben Ayade who has been you you know, see, you see, smoking hot you see, and is actually see, saying that despite, I challenge the, PDP, despite the people who have emissaries who have been sent to him, he seems to be saying that if certain things are not done, he will move, he will move. Uh, yes. Do you think this Zamfara issues are the way it's been in the public domain, mm. it may kind of like stop governors like that from also attempting to... Well, to well, it, 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 it is politics. They can... Mm, they can meet and mediate and do, but you see the point is this: PDP must be up on their game. They have to stand up, and we have to protect our laws. We should not just allow our laws. Politicians should stop playing with our laws, because there are there are consequences for all this. Now, what if the governor, mm. if, if what if governor Bello Matawale decides mm. to defect, mm. maybe? Uh, close to a year before election, so that by mm. the time you go to court for mm. interpretation and all of mm. that, mm. a new election would have already taken place. What uh, will now happen? There is always consequence for every action. In Nigeria, it is, it's just that our, we, we, I mean, a lot of us abandon our legal system. We abandon our cases. In the United States, in the past, I mean, recently, the, uh, the, 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 the uh, what's it called? The House of Lords. They continue with impeachment H of the House former. Of representatives. I mean, out of representatives. They continue with the impeachment of the, the former president. Just because they feel so strong that their laws should be followed and tested. And be, and be tested. So I think we ought to also stand by our laws. Otherwise, it will be. <coughs> it, 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 we, 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 will not, we will not be seen to have any law to be respected anymore. To be like we are in a state of nature where life is short and brutish. Anybody can do anything. Our laws must be tested. But I can't go Our on this matter without uh, asking you this very quickly, very yes. shortly. Yes. Um, what's the role of the Supreme Court in all of this? The Chief Justice of Nigeria, what will yes. he do if mm. such a matter comes to him that this governor who enjoyed the Supreme Court verdict mm. had uh, defected to another yes, uh, there, party? There is, no, there is no judge who gives a decision. I see that his decision is being, is being castrated. I will look at you with, with, with joy. It's not possible. In fact, if such a matter comes before the same judge, he might damnify him in damages, serious damages, and put him under a very, a very, a very strenuous uh, uh, situation. And that is why we are saying that he risks content. He risks content. Well, let's just hope that the politicians are listening because they are always tried all sort of tricks. Well, that's it for this edition of This Week from me and the entire team here in Abuja. Goodbye and thank you for watching. I'm Somna Sambo.